Hello and welcome to a tutorial video about the different oscillators inside the Kurzweil PC3 that are available for use in, uh, in, in your programming. Uh, so to start off with, I'm going to start off with all the single block oscillators, then we'll move on to the two block, the three block, and then finally the, the four block oscillators. So let's start off with sine. Uh, this is what it sounds like. your basic sine wave. Uh, this does not alias, as you can hear there. Um, and, and so, generally speaking, if you need a sine wave, this is the, uh, the best way to go, is just the, the, the single block sine. Okay, so let's go on. Now we have our sawtooth. It has some very obvious aliasing. It really starts um, a couple of keys above C4. Uh, and, and so if you're, if you're doing a bass sound, this is good for especially some of the more modern bass sounds which tend to have sort of a harder edge to them. Um, the, this, this particular oscillator is good for that kind of a thing. Uh, it's also good if you're doing FM programming on the PC3. Um, I'm not going to get into that today, um, but just know that this is useful for that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to try or triangle. Now there's just a tiny bit of uh, aliasing if you're listening to the sound uh, with headphones plugged into the PC3 and it's up really loud. But for the most part, you're not going to hear it. And so if you need to use a triangle waveform, this is the best one to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to square. And incidentally, I think this is the only one that's available as a DSP oscillator in the PC3. So this is a single block square. And you can hear there the uh, aliasing in the higher registers. Again, if you stay below C4, you're going to be okay. And so it makes it useful for things like bass sounds. Uh, if you're emulating a keyboard, for instance, with like a sub-octave square wave that gets added in for thickness, this would be a, a good oscillator to use for that purpose. Okay, so let's go on to noise. This is your basic white noise. Uh, LP noise is white noise combined with a uh, 6 dB per octave low pass filter with uh, no resonance. So you can get various flavors of white noise, or flavors of noise I should say, like brown or pink or, or, or what have you. Okay, so let's go back to, whoops, let's go back here. Uh, let's see here, and I, oh, now we have the uh, plus oscillators. So sine plus is the first one. What this does is this is going to add a sine wave to whatever is coming through uh, before it in, in, in the DSP signal path. So since I have a sawtooth key map over here, you're going to hear the sawtooth wave and the sine together. Okay, and uh, no aliasing. Okay, saw plus is the same thing, only it adds a sawtooth waveform. One thing to note about the PC3, uh, let's say I do something like this, um, and I go saw plus, let's find it, saw plus, saw plus. This sound uses one note of polyphony, okay, and the PC3 has 128 notes of polyphony. Essentially, uh, in, in, in most circumstances, not all circumstances, but most circumstances, if you're using one layer, you get 128 notes of polyphony, no matter what you put in there. So I have five sawtooth waves right now. And I could detune them, I could do whatever I want to them uh, within this layer, and it's still going to just use up one note of polyphony. Okay, um, let's go ahead and go back to algorithm one. Okay, very good. Uh, let's Let's see, let's put this to none. There it is. Okay, so let's move on. Noise plus, which as the name implies, adds noise to whatever comes before it in the, the signal chain. And finally, saw plus shaper. Uh, 
basically what this is, is this is a sawtooth waveform plus a Kurzweil specific DSP uh, algorithm known as Shaper. I'm not going to get into too many details about what Shaper does, but it's there and it uh, can be useful for different things including FM programming. Uh, that's frequency modulation. Okay, so let's go ahead then and that's all for the single block, so let's do the double block oscillators. We will start with sine. Ah, you might be wondering, why is there a double block sine oscillator? You know, and, and I kind of wonder too. Uh, let's go to the DSP control page. I'm going to crank the amp up. I'm going to turn the pitch way down to sub uh, sub audio, audio levels here. Turn this up a little bit. You can kind of hear that. Um, one thing that this is cool for is, you know, basically any of your motor emulations or if you need a helicopter something like that. This can be really cool for that. Um, generally speaking, if you need to use a sine wave, the single block is, is, is probably your best bet. But this is nice because, you know, it gives you kind of another flavor. And at these um, really low frequencies, you hear more, if you put the amp all the way up, you hear a nice clicking sound. So it can be useful for that kind of thing. Okay, let's move on. Now, this one is truly useful, sine plus this uh, two block, because this does amplitude modulation. Let me turn the, um, the uh, frequency way down on this so you can hear it. Now remember, we have a sawtooth key map that's essentially over here to the, the left of this block. So you're going to hear the sawtooth wave going through this block. Can you hear it, how it's got a bit of um, some tremolo there? And that's amplitude modulation in one block. Very cool. Okay, so let's go to saw. Now the two block saw sounds just like a regular sawtooth wave, except this one does not alias. Uh, which is nice if you're doing um, sounds that need to maintain their sonic integrity across the whole keyboard. Okay, uh, shape saw. This aliases, but it also allows you to um, change the shape. So uh, with at zero, you have a pure saw wave. At 127, you have a pure sine wave. And then in between, the shape of the waveform changes. So uh, this can be useful if you need something that's not a sine wave, that's not a sawtooth wave, and, and that you can't really get by mixing a sine wave with a sawtooth wave. Okay, so let's go on. PWM is pulse width modulation. As the name implies, that's what it is. It's a, it's a square wave with a variable uh, pulse width. Uh, really, I guess more of a rectangular wave. So let's Turn this up a little so you can hear that. Uh, this aliases quite nicely, I would say, in the upper register, so it can be useful for um, adding in some kind of funky noises if you need them. Okay, so let's go on. And there is our square wave. This one does not alias, so you have a square wave with no aliasing. Uh, just like the sawtooth wave that does an alias, this is useful if you need to have a sound that maintains its integrity across the entire keyboard. Okay, and that should, I believe, do it for, yeah, for the two-block oscillators. Now, there are one or two three-block oscillators. So let's take a look at those real quick here. Um, first one, and the most useful of the three-block, well, I, th I think this is actually the only one, is pulse width modulation. Okay, now this is the good pulse width modulation. By that, I mean it does not alias. So let's go here to width. So I'm going to change the width. And you can hear that it doesn't alias uh, at, at, at high frequencies. So it's, it's nice, again, if you need something that uh, allows you to do pulse width modulation and you want that sound to maintain its integrity in the higher octaves of the keyboard. Okay, so finally, let's go ahead and look at the four block oscillators. Okay, so the first one we'll look at is sync saw. 
Now, uh, in, in synthesizer terms, this would be hard sync with a sawtooth wave as the uh, slave. I'm not entirely sure what the master is. I don't remember if it's a square wave or another sawtooth wave. I think it's another sawtooth wave. Um, to be honest, I, I, I just don't remember. But anyway, uh, to give you an idea of what that sounds like, let's mess with this offset parameter. Okay, so you can hear how that sounds as we vary the offset. Um, and so, and this does not alias. Uh, so, so this gives you sync saw sounds that with, without aliasing. Okay, so let's go on super saw. Super saw is, I believe, two sawtooth waves and with a bit of detuning. So if we go to the, um, yeah, detune's already set to eight cents here. Here we go. So that's two sawtooth waves. Very nice. Let's go ahead and go to sync square. Now I'm not going to play this one for you because I actually need to set up cascading in order to use this. Um, because one layer will hold the master and then the next layer holds the slave. Okay, uh, just to show you real quick uh, how this works, you have pitch, you have offset, just like you did with the sawtooth wave, but you can now vary the width. Um, this is two square waves where one is the master and one is the slave. So you can vary the width of the master or vary the width of the slave or both. But uh, I wanted to show you that all the controls for this are in the first block. In the second block, if you go to the DSP control page, there's nothing. There's, no, there's, there's nothing to control. So when you use this one, you use both of them and it takes up two layers. Okay, so then triple saw is like... Uh, the uh, uh, super saw, but now it's three sawtooth waves. And so um, what you get when you detune is you get one that's eight cents above, for instance, and one that's um, uh, eight cents below. Now also notice here a minus two cents per octave. So the detuning gets less as you move up the keyboard uh, by two cents. So um, so that's kind of cool in that you can... So the sound is... is, is um, if you can hear the beat frequencies, the beat frequencies are more or less... more or less the same across the whole keyboard, which is why you would want that... Um, the, to set key tracking that way. Okay, so let's go back here and I think that does it. Yes, that does. So those are all of the DSP oscillators that you can use in the PS in in the PC3, uh, in this particular series of videos I'm doing um, about the uh, DSP uh, in the PC3, I'm I'm also going to go through what all those other blocks were that we skipped past. Um, you have filters, you have um, other DSP modifiers, you have all sorts of cool things that you can use when making a sound, and when you combine that with being able to cascade up to 32 layers. Um, and being able to, to, to mix layers together and split them and do all that kind of stuff. You can come up, basically, it's, it's, it's just like having a, a modular synthesizer with, with really great um, DSP and really great effects uh, all rolled into one. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I really love the PC3 and why I feel like it's head and shoulders above all the other keyboards that are out there on the market today um, with respect to at least it, uh, hardware. And really, I think it's a lot better um, than most software. Uh, with a few exceptions. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this, and hopefully uh, you will now go forth and have lots of fun with your PC3 and all this great new knowledge you have. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you next time.